Good morning, folks. How many more times will we see it? The biggest solar eruptions since November of 2011 have been in every direction except Earth's. Happened again last night. Just perfectly following us around the star is this Earth-facing quiet. Not that we're complaining, it's just that the last time we saw it happen was 400 years ago and then the sun went to sleep, ushering in the worst period of the Little Ice Age. The Earth-facing features remained calm, although we did finally get a sea flare after days and days without one. Let's not forget that Mercury and Mars are entering heliocentric opposition today, which can give the sun a bit of a boost when it occurs. The limb eruptions already got it started. Let's see what the Earth-facing disk has in store in the coming days. The sunspots are still matching the low flaring output, however. The largest region is spread magnetically on the south with little interaction while the limb spots are tiny and needing some backup quick. Three days of solar wind show all calm for the most part. Our magnetic shield must feel like it's on vacation here. Southern red negative coronal hole coming in without blue coronal fields blocking it. That's it, down south on the left, dark in 211 angstroms. We've been watching Earth's magnetic connection points jump from the departing positive coronal hole to its trailing extension, and now a third connection point has left, and we see the connectivity coming to that incomer down south. It is a very powerful opening, and one that will switch near-Earth influence to negative here in the next few hours. U.S. West Coast, please take a chill pill. She's been rocking way above average for two days. Two of the three five-pointers here actually rang into six range. Hopefully these aren't four shocks. The North Atlantic into Arctic Ocean quakes are worth noting as well. Way, way up there. Couple links for you today. First is one that is about 50 minutes long but worth the time if you like watching those big storms. Last thing Messenger did before crashing into Mercury was detail its magnetic fields. Very interesting illustration. We've got 14 years worth of Earth carbon monoxide here at the Earth Observatory, a definitive decrease on the planet since 2000, and the number one story. NASA's flying saucer test is going to be shown live. We allegedly get the same feed NASA gets for the first time. Details on how to watch are here as well. Next launch window is tomorrow afternoon. I will update you in the morning. Got twin systems south of Mexico. The big one is going to sputter, but the second will strengthen and head for the coastline there. Watch for earth spot quakes nearby. Little rapid scan update. Yesterday they added one of the pop-up storms over Pennsylvania. When they're all done, I'll do a deeper look on these, but until then, see if you can find the heartbeat of the storms like we already saw with the sunspots on Iris. Meanwhile, our top alerts tonight are easy to see. Heat and moisture flow making it into the northern states and set to drop tornadoes potentially tonight if it feels feisty. Northern plains, eyes open. Over in Europe, we see the northern lows with all the action and a still calm to the south. We see all the clouds sticking to the low and convergence lines. I'm curious what it's like in southern Norway right now from this one. Down under, the two systems are much closer together today but still straddled on opposite sides of the landmass there. The cloud lines are as drawn to those convergence lines here as we'll ever see them. New Zealand weather shares would be appreciated. We've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. I'm still getting through hundreds of support emails. We'll be on the clock to lock in membership price before it goes up, so please watch for a response. It's 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.